level is a tough competitive world and the recent fortunes of the Japan rugby team serve to illustrate that. The famous win against Wales in June was perhaps the result of the international game through the first half of 2013. But the Brave Blossoms arrive in Wales having conceded at least 40 points in all three of their matches so far in November. kickoff just six minutes or so away let's catch up with the coin toss which took place a little bit earlier Toshiaki Hiroshi for Japan and Alexander Voitov for Russia perfect do you know which way yet or not yeah you're gonna go left to right so as you come out of the change rooms play towards the change room yeah play. yeah good luck thank you okay yeah Good match. Okay, thank good you. Good good match. Good match. Well, there we saw the referee, Luke Pierce. So it will be Japan playing from left to right from that angle. Let's take a look now at the teams. Japan start with 12 of their players in action for the first whistle against Scotland last weekend. The NRL champion, the former Australian Craig Wing, is one of those not involved tonight. The uh, Russia coach, Kingsley Jones, combines this role with his job as Lynn Jones, assistant of the Dragons. And part of his challenge is to tap into the huge sporting resources available in Russia. The marquee name, Vasily Artemyev, he there starting on the wing. Well, welcome to North Wales. Myself, Martin Gillingham. Alongside me is Chris Horseman. Well, Chris, two sides in the uh, second tier of international rugby. The Japanese have been quite busy over the course of the last uh, couple of weeks or so. Rather less so Russia, who haven't really played for six weeks since the end of their domestic season. Two contrasting approaches. Who do you think that favours the best? I think it's the old adage, you know, battle hardened or battle weary with uh, Japan and obviously Russia in terms of w with their season being, a, you know, the sport being a summer game, it's how they're going to be undercooked. I mean, looking at the two teams, obviously they're second tier nations. You've got to th say that Japan recently have really stolen the march. I think obviously the great results they had both against Wales in that, that test series and obviously the performances against Scotland and New Zealand shows exactly how the game's progressing over there. Obviously we know the, the foreign imports they bring over there, but the, the base of their homegrown players is really growing and you can see that with the national side and how they're developing. Well, there you can see on the right the Russia captain Alexander Voitov leading out the men in red today. Red shirts and red shorts. And on the far side, the Japanese. The Japanese, the Brave Blossoms, world rank number 14 against Russia. who are ranked 19 according to the IRB. This match taking place in North Wales, thanks to the Conwy County Borough Council, part of the International Rugby Series, a series of matches happening over the course of November. And the, uh, it's quite a contrast, the two captains. Toshiaki Hodosi, who plays on the right wing. Alexander Voitov, who's one of the tall number of Russian players with a good grasp of English rather helps of course when your coach is the world for Kingsley Jones these days supported by Tony Hanks the uh, New Zealander who came over to these parts he uh, was the director of rugby for quite a while at WASP before moving up to sale to clubs in the Aviva Premiership I think you can tell with both the formality of the two anthems
Japanese squad, focusing not only on this match, but I'm sure also thinking of their head coach, Eddie Jones, back at home, who's recovering from illness. Two of the most stirring anthems you'll find in the world. Russia and Japan meeting for the first time in Europe. In fact, they've only met on four previous occasions. All of those in Tokyo. Luke Pierce taking charge of a test match for just the second time. Big occasion for Luke Pierce, who's come through the ranks, has been taking charge of a few matches in the Aviva Premiership this season. Yeah, Reese, you can hear me. So Russia in all red. Yeah. Japan. Uh, not getting you, mate. They have made the uh, change in colours. Hey, Reese. And they will be playing from no. right to left. No, Reese, I'm not hearing you. Is the comms man up? Sorry, it's two minutes. The problem with this. So we're all set to go. The most recent meeting of the two teams back in 2010 in the. Uh, Prince Chichuba Memorial Stadium in Tokyo and Japan inflicted a 75 points to three defeat on the Russians. I mean this week I've, uh, I've spoken to Kingsley because obviously they've been based up here at Park Area so, and listening to him talk you know obviously they're, they're very much looking forward to this game but obviously with their players being undercooked you know, the big thing for them is how they can cope with the physicality in the start so it'll be interesting to see because we know how well Japan started against New Zealand if they start that well against the Russians how can they cope with that with the lack of game time well, Japan with nine of the 15 who started in that famous 23-8 win against Wales in June it was very much a second string Welsh team with so many players away with the Lions in Australia yet it was an official test victory and came just a week after Japan had run them very close indeed. Time on, please. So we are all set to go. And it will be the fullback, Ramel Gesa, who gets us underway. The first catch. A clean one from the Japanese. Back to the scrum half. That was uh, Tanaka. Crucial, I think, the first 10 minutes for Russia to make every tackle. And here you can see the Japanese threatening to run through already. That's a terrific break from Fujita. Fujita, one of the changes from the match at Murrayfield last week. He started from the bench. Just three changes to that side. Yeah, we can see here Jap today referee playing the advantage now to the Japanese up to the Russia 22 Tanaka again with his hands on the ball still advantage this Russian team very good athletes but in terms of international rugby still very early in their time they went to the last World Cup in New Zealand taken back there by Michael Broadhurst a New Zealander that was Shota Hori, Hori who plays Super Rugby for the Melbourne Rebels. 
it's the speed of the ball at the moment. Russia have got to affect us in this contact area. They're not getting anyone over to slow the ball. So Japan have got another penalty advantage. They're just being able to recycle this ball at will at the moment. Forcing a second penalty. And that was against uh, Alexander Kudyakov. He plays for the Krasny Yar Club. It's been a shift in the balance of power in uh, domestic rugby in Russia over the course of the last couple of seasons. If you'd have looked at a Russian national side back at World Cup time only uh, what a couple of years ago now, it had been dominated by clubs from Monino, which is the big uh, Moscow club. But the balance of power has shifted east, and it's now uh, Krasny Yar and NSA STM, two clubs from the same region out towards Siberia. And uh, that shift in the balance of power rather reflected in this Russia squad. Is Ayuma Goromaru. Interesting decision this to go to points early early on. I would have thought, you know, the speed of ball they were getting in terms of the attacking intent they were playing, you know, I think they sh you know, should have maybe gone for a scrum on an early lineup, put the pressure on Russia. This just allows Russia to regather themselves, get the ball back down in Japan's heart. You know, obviously they want to win the game, but you would have thought with the intent they were playing, perhaps maybe go for the line out. So pragmatism. <laughs> It uh, rather raises the stakes for uh, Goromaru. Seven points against the Scots last weekend. Very different atmosphere here in North Wales. And he's very relaxed, kicking action, and he's on target first time up. So Japan leading by three points there. Yeah, I think Russia need to put this ball deeper. You know, they put it up to compete, but the, the J Japanese side were very, very well organised in terms of their, their pod of getting the, uh, the catcher up. I think what they need to do is to put this deeper into the Japanese territory, get Japan to kick the ball, because it's been four minutes almost now, and Russia even haven't touched the ball. And the longer go this goes on, obviously, the more it breeds confidence with Japan. Gaysin, the young 22-year-old fullback, gets the game back underway. The experienced player on the Russia side. He took that Artemyev and he's uh, in the thick of it. Failure to take the catch there. It was a knock on. A knock then on it touched coming the from uh, Toshi Uno. Looking forward to this with the with the scrum. Obviously, you look at the Russian side; they're a very, very big side. But I've been interested uh, to watch the Japanese okay, scrum recently, particularly um, in the Scotland game. I mean, they scored one of the tries from a turnover ball on the, the Scottish scrum. Particularly with the new engagement sequence here, with that, you know, it's not become a momentum situation. It's more of a, a static scrummaging, and then then there's a competition. So that it's new rules have certainly suited them. Bind, set. Anton Ryabov. Yes, the scrum half for Russia. Only just his 11th cap. Look at the number eight for Russia tonight. Victor Presev. Not the tallest number eight, but he's very, very fast indeed if he gets an opportunity. Right to the edge of the 22. Russia will look to uh, keep the ball in hand just a little bit here. Totally out of the game in the first four minutes, but they're up to the 22 now. It's Ryabov. You can see the Russia's intent here to get their big forwards to carry and to suck in a few of those Japanese defenders. But the speed of the ball they're getting is not quite as quick as, as the Japanese, and you can see the Japanese have been able to get their line to re re reform there as a defensive wall. This is a neat pick up by uh, the fly half Sergei Sigurdov, but then it was eventually knocked on. So through the first five minutes. Japan leading by three points to nil. Both these sides have yet to secure their place in the World Center. Cup in two years' time. Your side, Adam. Japan, they will have to be uh, the winner of the Asian Nations Cup. They've won it for the last six years, having won all four matches in those uh, six years, 24 out of 24. So if they can win their four next year, then they will put their spot. Set. Yes, That's for Russia at the moment. They're in a three-way battle for two guaranteed places with uh, Romania and Georgia. Those are the additional spots for European teams. The third European side will go through to the repechage. And uh, in some respects, I think Russia might quite fancy being the 
proper charge side because it would put them in the same pool, that pool of death as Wales, there we go. England, back. Australia. And I think uh, one or two Russians, well, if you're going to go out, you might as well go out on the biggest stage. Yeah, go out in a blaze of glory. That was a good, uh, good clearance set there by the Japanese. Good solid scrum. Forwards cleared, took the ball up, and then a nice kick there. Interesting as well, the line out. I know Steve Balfwick is coaching the uh, Japanese line out, and we know uh, what a tactician he is with it, so be interested to see how they compete here. It worked well, good two handed take there from uh, the Tenko. He's flying up again, sugar above. That's good. again. Broadhurst who plays his club right here for the Rico Black uh, Rams. Five minutes inside the Russia half. Here comes the scrum half again. That was at Tanaka. A little offload. This is very good rugby from Japan. Everyone's pushing themselves up to the line. They're always an option and, and nine's really good and busy around the base. He's bringing his forwards in. He's sniping. He's really keeping that Russian defence honest. The uh, fly half got himself tied in just a little bit, and then the pass a little bit loose out to the captain, Hiroshi. Some nice rugby being played here by Japan, a real good mix. You know, they're not afraid to use those big ball carries they have in the back five of their scrum. But like I say, what's really good is the mix in terms of backs and forwards linking the offloads. Everyone's a threat, everyone's pushing up into the line. You know, it's causing Russia no end of difficulties in terms of uh, their defensive line. But I think the key for Russia is they need to slow this breakdown at the moment. Sort of Japan are just recycling this ball at will. The Schnobeladze brothers in the front row tonight for Russia. This is Valery. And his 21st cap. Going the way of Japan, so the influence of Steve Borthwick, who is here tonight, will be having an impact. Japan again, just trying to find the gap. A little offload there, which didn't quite go to the hand of uh, Malisau. Unlucky there from Japan. Once again, what the, what's really working well for them is both 9 and 10, they're actually getting to the gain line. They're not just sitting back and allowing the, the attack to drift with the drift defence. They're really squaring up very much like in a rugby league style, committing defenders, and then those guys are pushing through for that offload. And, you know, it's, it's not quite coming off yet, but you can definitely see the intent. You can see the, the way they're trying to play this game. So the uh, Russia front row, Valerie and uh, Grigory Schnobeladze. Wait. wait for me. Actually play for the big rivals, NSA and Krasnaya. Crouch. Grigory the loose head, the younger of the two, at 30. Yes, Knight. I bet they certainly had a big uh, bill uh, for food in their house <laughs> growing up. <laughs> Look at the power there of the uh, Japan scrum. Tanaka on to uh, Ono. Again, and Mali Sal that time uh, letting him down. Chance here for Russia to clear it inside. Andy, advantage over. The clearance kick, but uh, isn't going for touch. No, he needed to get that off field, just give them side to realign. But once again, they're just kicking this ball back to Japan. Japan will recycle it, they'll get their attacking structure in. And obviously, you can see here nine sniping again, looking for those forwards, but this time he plays it with ten. Yes, Kase Uno, from the Centauri Sun Goliath Club. Every playing advantage here to Japan, that was uh, the line you had it, the uh, number eight. Ten meters inside the uh, Russia half. by Atakayama, his 48th cap today. This is better from Japan. Good flow to the uh, pullback, Koromaru. This is where Japan just need a little bit, of, little bit of composure here. You know, once again, they're in this red zone again. Just need to make sure these passes stick. They don't have to score with the first pass. They just need to make sure they're recycling, sucking in those Russian defenders. They get that time on Luke Thompson. Zealanders. 
had served his three years in Japan. A chance to break away here. And Artemyev is there, and Artemyev's got a real pace. He got his right boot to it. And now Ostrusko is after it. And Ostrusko is going to score and do so between the posts. Well, it does go to show you here that Japan had to be mindful. Vladimir Ostrusko. That's just what I was saying earlier. Just, you know, you just need that composure in that red zone. You know, they, they were almost trying to force it. They're making that initial break, but when they get into that 22, you know, they, they're just forcing the pass or maybe putting in a specter lift kick there. But, you know, this really is a try against the run of play if ever I've seen one. But, you know, good chase from the Russians and uh, good composure here to just dot it down. So, Vladimir Ostrushko. He's been uh, on the fringes of the Russia side for a number of seasons. Operates rather in the shadow of his uh, illustrious wing on the other side, Vasily Artemyev, who helped set that up, and uh, Ramel Gisa. Fifteenth tonight, Igor Klushnikov, who is one of the first names on the team sheet for Russia normally. He's been resting for this November period. Well, that'll certainly give the Russians some confidence there, you know. Obviously, defensively, they're, they're under pressure, but obviously, they didn't concede that try. So, you know, they got through that set, they've got themselves a score, so hopefully that'll build the confidence for them to show their attacking game. Fielded there by the neighbor right, that is uh, Viktor Gresev. Taken in seven stop. That's good. Taken back into the 22, so they didn't have the option of going directly for touch. There's the fallback for Amaru. Back to uh, the captain, Horosi. Horosi, good positioning there from Gayson. Russia fullback. Not the best kick there from uh, Russia. That really needed to go off there. He's in his 22, just throwing the ball straight back to Japan on the front foot again. So, Another good carry there from uh, Tui. Oh, great break from the fullback, got him out of it. He tried to offload and he couldn't find so. And the ball has gone forward, but terrific work there from uh, Ayuma Goromaru. I think Japan have just got to have the confidence here. You know, they don't need to uh, try that miracle pass. You know, it's that old adage in rugby, you know, win the game early, score the port points later on. They've just got to keep hold of the ball, keep going through the phases. Like I say, the mix with their play in midfield is great. You know, their big back five runners are running off 10, running off 12, running off 9. They're ca causing problems for the Russian defence. But like I say, when they're getting into that red zone, they've probably blown about two or three opportunities now. Japan have played several times in Wales. Touch. They have yet to win here. They played uh, nice two one. neutral matches as they're doing tonight. So this is their third. They didn't win either of those. And uh, they were beaten by Argentina in Cardiff. 33-12 and then 43-9 by Samoa in Wrexham, which isn't that far away from here. Both of those matches during the 99 World Cup. So 14 years ago. It's a very good drive here by the Japan, Japanese forward. The ball's at the back, all the other forwards are just working past the ball. Just, let's say, patience here and they should get over. Shotohori is controlling it there at the base. The hooker. And the try has been awarded by Luke Pierce, and that was very well coordinated by the Japanese pack. And it's Hendrik Tui. In the end, who gets the try? <laughs> that was a great try there by the Japanese forwards. I think the key with the driving ball is obviously is that ball transference. Get the ball to the back, and then all the other forwards just work, keep working past the ball, past the ball. And you can see there that ball is nice and long and thin. Very difficult for the Russians to get in, and that's good composure by the Japanese. Two, making his 17th appearance for Japan tonight. I will protest. They've won five of their last eight test matches. The early and middle part of the year going very well for them. And 
they did lose uh, the first match of this tour, and I placed that first match in inverted commas because it was at home against New Zealand. But uh, the scoreline, I think, would be fair to say, did flatter the All Blacks just a little bit. Makes it a seven point score. Ten points to seven. Yeah, you're right about that New Zealand game. I haven't got, watched it myself several times. You know, I think with 30 minutes in the first half, it was 7-6 uh, uh, to the All Blacks. And it was only a couple of mistakes at the end of that first half that let them in, New Zealand. But, uh, you know, Japan will be happy with that repost. Nice and early, just get back into the game. Okay, so with the restart. from Andre Garbazov. Garbazov. Kingsley Jones has moved up from the back row. Garbers off earning his 50th cap for Russia tonight, so he reaches a milestone. Taking in. Scrum half. Stop two. Tanaka. That's good. This is Shukarabov. Strushko is after it, but it was rather too deep, and that was a comfortable catch for Kaseyono. I mean, there's 11 people walking. Yeah, a bit of a nothing kick there. You That's know, they're three times they kick back now, Russia, and, uh, and, and each time and nothing's come from it. You'd like to think maybe their back three would ask a few questions. It's difficult to get into the game if you're not attacking at the moment. The Russians, all they're doing is just kicking the possession back to Japan. What they need to do is to stamp their own authority on the game. That, they can only do that if they've got the ball in hand. Japan on the line, please. That's good. Thank you. Come on, set the game up for uh, Barry Schnobeladze. Now working pretty well at the moment for uh, for Russia. Two centres for Russia here, relatively uh, inexperienced. That was uh, Makovetsky, who has played 33 times for Russia. There's Garapazov. Continue to work uh, the short side over there to the Russians, up to within sight of the no Japanese 22. The referee's playing an advantage here to Russia. Shnobaladze reaching out for that. It was almost man and ball, but Luke Pierce brings them back for the penalty. Yeah, better by Russia there. You can see what they're Tackle trying to the floor, do. Exploit the whole width of the pitch, keep working to the far touch line, you know, and then get their backs to reload. So their backs are running nice. against those nice uh, Japanese forwards in terms of that defensive line coming back from the line out there. It, it's a little bit predictable, you know, in terms of how they're carrying the ball. There's, there's not much uh, sort of invention or sort of skill level in terms of it. It's very brute force, one directional, but, you know, it worked there to get the penalty. Uh, veteran Hitoshi Ono coming through to make the tackle there. The 76th international tonight, Hitoshi Ono. Now within five of the Japanese record with 81 caps. Hirotoki Onozama, the most caps ever Japanese rugby player. So, Rami Gesan, just his second appearance in the Red of Russia. With the wind behind him, and he'll be very happy with that. Young fullback, just 22. His second successful strike. It's all tied up, 10 points apiece. Oh, that's good by the Russians, you know, keeping the ball in hand, showing a bit of what they can do. You know, I think uh, they, they'd be happy after 20 minutes being 10 all in terms of the balance of possession and territory. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens now, this next 20, to see if Japan can get back into the game or Russia can actually add something. Restart. Garbazov trying to palm it back. Okay. Just playing Let's a little loose there from Russia. Russia. Good pressure on the Japanese. If they can spread it wide here, there may be an opportunity, but the referee flag against blue. is going to come back because there is a flag out. Time off, please. And it, uh, Just give me a sec when you come back. Against a Japanese Five. player. Let's listen to this. Thanks. Hang on, man. Here we go. Red player with the ball. Just tap goal before the ball is, uh, is caught the ball by a blue player. So tap the man. Did you get a number? I didn't get a number, no. Okay. Uh, captain, please. Where is he? Yeah. So it's a tackle without the ball. It's the same as your penalty over here. Yeah. The guys must have the ball before they tackle them. Okay, off from the kick. Number. Oh, we didn't get a number, unfortunately. It was a penalty through Russia. Time on, tackle without the ball. No malice, just mistiming, I suggest. Yeah, obviously you can see here, 
it's from the kickoff. He's just a little bit early, a little bit eager there, the winger ball. on terms of the, the the Russian player there. But like I say, no malice involved or anything, just a mistiming issue. Yes, Yoshikazu Fujita, the guilty party, who's just 20. Yeah, she scored uh, six tries in a match against the UAE last year. Here's the number eight, Helena Ashi Halani. The numerical advantage here, not much room to play with. And eventually goes into the hands of Ostrushko. Ostrushko can spread it wide here. There's an opportunity, Makovetsky that time. A little chip through from the fly half, Shugarabov. An awkward bouncing ball. And look at the red jerseys coming through very quickly indeed. No! Oh, you have to say, uh, Ono did very well there. He held the ball up, allowing his defence to come back. Deep inside the in goal area, but there's the clearance kick. Yeah, very well. I think it was Michael Broadus there, the uh, the, the open side for Japan. He did really well to get back and get over get over his uh, his player there to support him to make sure that that ball came back. But there, that that phase was a bit of a comedy okay. of error. Russia missing a kick. Japan once again forcing that miracle pass, turning the ball over, and then being back in their own line. Time off, please. Looks rather like Colin Yashi Hulani is down getting some treatment. Captain. Who was uh, a member Legal of the Japanese squad Captain. at the Make last sure the World Cup. Front of the ball when it starts. Make one appearance in New catch. Zealand. Ball carry at the he front. certainly showed up well early on in this game. He's had a couple of muscular carries getting over the game line. Okay, you, you can see he's a bit of a, a go-to man in terms of that go-forward ball for the Japanese side. So, Valery Schnobeladze will be looking to hit his man here, which is the option. He goes short to his captain, that's Boitov. If we play the advantage here to Russia. Advantage, tackle no arms, number two. Second advantage. If we play the second advantage here Back we come, number for Russia. Two, tackle with no arms. And that time it's Shotohori. An illegal tackle, no use of the arms. Number two must use his arms, he can't just dive to his feet with his shoulder. Post goal? Okay. Uh, it's disappointing from the, the Japanese point of view. I can imagine the coaches will be pulling out their hair because, you know, ill discipline, you know, a, a forced pass, and potentially now Russia can go into the lead here. You know, we need Japan need to be a bit more clinical, both in terms of what they're doing in defence, in terms of rash challenges, you know, early challenges, not using your arms, and in terms of clinical in that attack, you know, not forcing these passes because at the moment they're gifting the Russians the points. Well, the old Gilbert ball is being. Uh Flying pretty well tonight for uh, Ramil Gessa. He's fine now. He's fine now. He's fine. Let's see if he can slot a third. Russia, 19th on the IRB rankings. It's one ahead of Spain, one behind the United States. They're great rivals who they met at the last World Cup in New Plymouth. Gessa, long approach run. The flags are raised. Russia. Yeah, it's good by Russia, you know, in terms of sport, you've got to take the opportunities when they present themselves. Like I say, the thing that's led in Japan down is just that clinical, clinical ability, both in attack and defence. You know, they've just got to be a little bit cooler and a little bit calmer. In possession well. Tenko stepped in the play scrum half. Use it! Inside race. Sugar Bob. Yeah, good kick, good set there by Russia just to get out. Obviously, the nine was held into the ruck. Forward stepped up just a couple of phases to get 9 10 back in there. Nice little clearance now. Shotohori, close to the tail. The carry there from Milani, the number eight. Offside, is he? Advantage, rectory offside. It's uh, Pronenko has come offside for Russia, so the referee 
playing their advantage here for Japan and the three points if they want it pretty much straight in front 26 meters out or so yeah I think they'll take the point I think it's the right Number idea three, once again Japan getting over the gain line at will there you know that that's what they've got over the Russians at the moment in terms of their ball carrying there's a lot of footwork into contact players finding edges looking to offload the ball and just maintaining that that front foot ball and as a defensive side it's very difficult oh I said he was going for points and he's not he's going it's for, an interesting yeah. call isn't it because right at the start of the game we thought well maybe there's an opportunity here to turn pressure into five points well oh hang on I think he did say post Pointed for the goal, so you must go for goal. You can't change your mind. Come back, come back and retake so the Luke kick. So Luke Pierce is saying no, they pointed for a goal. that they made the yeah, initial <laughs> signal to go for the three points, and then that Garamaru decided right. to go for the corner. Well, Luke Pierce making them come back here and retake the kick. See that terribly often. No, I think, that's, not at level, no, I think it's the lost in translation. I think that's where that, that comes from in terms of that. But like you were saying, it was interesting in terms of the decision to go for touch. What we were saying earlier on, they're being quite pragmatic, I suppose, because of that driving line out try. They probably thought going for the corner, they've got the opportunity again. But taking the three points, they'll be happy with us. Yes, if you're considering the level that Japan are playing at, both these. Uh, Two sides are in the uh, IRB second tier. Japan certainly towards the top end of it. They're uh, world ranked 14. That's one ahead of Canada, just behind Tonga. So, Goromaru, straight in front, 24, 25 metres out. No mistake. Well, after all the confusion of what they were doing, that was a good kick there and uh, back, back on level terms in this game. Well, Kingsley Jones will be pretty happy here because I think his expectations probably were low when we consider that they, have, they haven't had too much rugby. He's only had them for about 10 days to work with. He played uh, half a game, really, against Oxford University at Italy Road last week. So they come here short of match fitness and short of time together, whereas the Japanese, well, the uh, second string Japanese squad were given a bit of a beating during the week on Tuesday night at King's Home by Gloucester. But they have been working together now for a number of weeks. Yeah, I think Kings will be uh, really pleased with this. I'm about to say, speaking to me in the week, obviously he was a little concerned in terms of uh, preparation time that they've had as a squad and you know how they would gel. But I think you could see early on that they were definitely short of match practice. But as the game's gone on, you can see they're growing in confidence. The more mistakes Japan are making, the more Russia are growing in, into the game. And as you say for Japan, I mean they couldn't really have had a better preparation. You know, All Black Scotland. You know, they, they should be well on their way as a group here. To assist the referees, both uh, local men, Rhys Thomas and Andy Davis. Luke Pierce, who uh, was certainly based in Exeter, who's moving up to the capital up towards London. Since the last time I spoke to him, he was involved in the Junior World Championship in Nantes over the course of the summer. This is good from the Japanese, fast through the hands, and that's a terrific break, and it's Malasau, so a great step. Important tackle being made by Makovetsky. There's still an opportunity here if they can get the ball through the hands to within a metre. That time it was the hooker, Shotohori. And the referee says that's been held up, but it's going to be a five metre scrum. So the pressure not entirely off here for Russia. I mean, that was brilliant by Japan there. Rather than when they broke the line, trying to force that pass, the man just built his, took his time, <laughs> wait for the support to get to him rather than forcing the pass. But that was from turnover ball from the line out, and that's the best type of ball to play with. Here we can see the Japanese player just bides his time, waits for a support, looks around, knows it's not on, and then just recycles that ball. Whereas earlier on, they, they were throwing those miracle passes. Yes, Malasau, who plays his club rugby for Yamaha Jubilu, playing for his country for the 12th time tonight. Bind! Set. Yes, nine. So this is a real test for that Russia front five to hold the road. And they're doing pretty well at the moment. As Tanaka spins the ball out. Japan again to within two meters. There's the pickup. That time it was Broadhurst. Oh, they've got men out wide here. Oh, and then the ball has gone forward. Fujita went over in the corner, but 
a lack of precision really there from Japan. It was uh, three against one, wasn't it? Well, the coaches must be absolutely pulling their hair out in the stands. I mean, you know, there's three-man overlap there. They're, they're just forcing, forcing it too much. I mean, you've got to admire the will that they're trying to play with. But like I say, it's that clinicalness. You know, it's that bit of precision in terms of attack and defence. They don't need to force it here. Well, we've just seen a wonderful break from Manasau, which almost created a try. And then a forward pass, which rather threw one away. 13 points apiece through the half hour in North Wales. Crouch. Bind. Set. Yes, yes bomb, the scrum half. They're looking for a solid scrum and a quick strike here to pick up by Gresev, the number eight. to uh, Sugarbop and Sugarbop sees there's an opportunity to make a few meters and then kicks in field and that gives Goromaru a chance to set up a counter attack. That ball needed to go off there, you know, he's just put himself, his team under massive pressure. But that's good work there by Russia at the breakdown, turning that over. They've got an opportunity if they can move it. Great turnover. But then the pass just going forward. So a lack of precision from both sides at the moment. Yeah, you can, you can see this, I think, with Russia, you can see it's a lack of precision in terms of they haven't played, but with, with the Japanese here, it's, it's just they're trying to force it too much. You know, time and time again, they're getting into that 22 with a couple of men to spare, golden try-scoring opportunities, and they're, they're just forcing the passes. If I'm a doctor, I can tell you. Half of the uh, Schno Schnobelatzer brothers, who's down, a bit of uh, the cold stuff over the knee. The Schnobelatzers uh, from uh, families of Georgian heritage. If you stay straight, so these days, days over in Siberia, over in the east of the country. Sometimes uh, in England, in the Aviva Premiership, you get players from Exeter. And moan and groan, and particularly followers about maybe going up to Newcastle. Imagine what it's like in Russia. <laughs> some, certain, some long bus journeys there, I imagine. Krasny Yarsin Monino is uh, a very long bus journey. Take it from there. Oh, there Beating. we go. Yeah. I mean, that, that'll definitely pre, uh, please Brian Moore <laughs> on his high horse about that. But the scrum battle's been quite even so far. Yes, Brian Moore, the former England hooker. He's uh, got a high media profile in the UK. And, all things uh, front row and scrummage is, uh, as you might expect, something of an aficionado, another vocal one as well. Yeah, he's uh, not afraid to give his opinion, let's put it that way. Yeah, Luke Pierce rather getting in the way there of uh, Anton Riaboff, through no fault of his own, and Riaboff having to react swiftly. Oh, that's good counter rucking there by the Japanese there, putting them under pressure. The knock on from Sergei Sugarov off the fly half. Uh, you can see uh, in terms of the breakdown, uh, Jap the Japanese side certainly have the uh, upper hand both in attack and defence. And just that little bit of extra work, that counter rucking, slowed down the delivery from the nine to the ten, which meant the pass was a bit loose, put that pressure on. That's one area Jap the Japanese side has certainly got the advantage in terms of the breakdown. Yes, it's quite a weekend in the Park Elias, which, when it's all right, uh, nice full, can be home to yeah, five and a half thousand spectators. We've got uh, also got the Crouch. Wales Rally on in these parts this weekend. Five. Set. Yes, nine. This venue, which has hosted quite a few internationals over the course of the last couple of years, it's only been open since 2011. Yeah, it's certainly uh, it's a great venue, obviously, uh, working up here with the North Wales uh, rugby team coach up here. It's a, it's a great venue, and uh, being part of the Wales 20s coaching setup, when we come up here, you know, we get full full houses for, you know, the games here. It's, it's a great place to play rugby. And Chris, if we think of the uh, traditional rugby geography in, in Wales, south, east and west Wales, but less so in the north. 
historically? No, that, that's the thing. I mean, obviously with the, the WYU, the idea was for myself to come up here and, and, and coach the uh, North Wales uh, development side. And it's been really successful. We've got a number of players in and around the Wales 20. We got promotion last year up into the championship. And it actually shows if you put the investment in, there's a, there's a real want and a will for rugby to, to do well up here. Good solid scrummage again, picked up by the number eight, Halani. Powerful run from Sao. Options left and right. Tanaka decides to go right this time. Six minutes to go to half time. Japan will be anxious to get another score, but then the ball has gone forward. Yeah, it's getting a bit like Groundhog Day here at the moment in this game in terms of saying the same thing, but you know. Japan are just forcing those passes, you know, and at the moment they're just letting Russia off the hook. And, and if it stays going in at 13 all, you know, the, the Russians will get a lot of confidence from this at the moment. You know, like I say, they're probably territory in possession, it must be 70 70 in terms of both of them in, in Japan's favour. But you know, it's 13 all on the scoreboard, I suppose that's all really matters. Yes, and consider this is a Japan side which what, four or five months ago beat Wales, albeit a weakened Wales. Crash! And then very close in the other test match as well, nine. both those matches in Japan. Six. Yes, nine! Yeah, I mean, Russia really having to play catch-up in international terms. Not sure, nine. It was great pressure there by the Japanese in, in terms of the scrum there that forced that feed in uh, for the Russian nine there. Be interesting to see what they do now. I think it's a free kick whether they go for a set scrum to play a back move off it or do they take a tap penalty. Back to the free kick. Look, Pierce, I think it's uh, being fairly generous to Kalinyashi Halani. He's clearly making quite a bit of noise out there. <laughs> if you scream and shout at me, I will reverse it. Yeah, interesting. But this is the great thing in terms of the, these internationals. You know, obviously we're looking at the, the, the second tier nations, but also in terms of the officials. You know, it's a breeding ground for these guys to get the experience. You know, to further themselves on the officiating ladder as well. Yes, I know that part of our audience tonight is in South Africa and Japan, assuming they do secure their qualification the 2015 Rugby World oh, Cup that will be in the same pool as the Springboks, also Samoa and Scotland. Tanaka with the pick-up, and there too is uh, Clarabono. Important phase this for both sides. Russia will look to protect their try line, but it's going to be a penalty. So what's the call here? Well, we go let's listen to this it's going to be a bit of a warning kind of penalties away in this area oh, here good. okay you must talk to your team about entry at the ruck and slowing the ball down would you like to speak to them yeah, yeah. Come on. no 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 quick well, they may be relatively new to the international game the russian players but they okay, have all four. the old tricks don't they <laughs> yeah uh, the old cynical play of slowing entry the ball nine. down you know rather give three away than seven but if i was japan here i'd definitely scrum. go for the scrum which they have done because they're, they're having no trouble winning their own ball and the great thing about if you can guarantee your scrum ball is you're tying in eight defenders so it gives you the opportunity to exploit that space from Yaki Tanaka, the scrum half of Senyo Wild Knights. Another of the Japan players who was part of their squad at the last World Cup in New Zealand. Very difficult to defend this position. Five metres out, right in the middle. Players evenly split on both sides. The pick up from the number eight, Halani. They've driven him up to the line, but they haven't got him over it yet. There it is for Tanaka. No, no. That's Broadhurst this time who has a go. Tanaka is going to go wide this time. So is caught rather flat-footed. We have to admire the Russia defence here. Two and a half minutes remains until half-time, and they've turned it. Yeah, great pressure on the ruck there, Lot good counter rucking, you know, piling the bodies in there and making it difficult and getting that turnover. They've got to make sure they clear this now. And that was real block and took it up to the 22. Back to the fullback, Gaysat. Ball up to uh, halfway. And that was uh, a little bit high from Makovetsky. The referee lets it go. Thanks, Ray. the uh, fly half. Up 
Pottery. Well, certainly, if Russia can go into half time level, Kingsley Jones will regard that as a major success. Yeah, definitely, they'll be pleased with this. But like I said, they've got to start slowing this ball down at the breakdown because Japan are just getting up over the advantage line again and again. But once again, another bit of inaccuracy in terms of their handling, and another opportunity goes. Yes, Kosiono copping it up in the tackle. First by Japan, then by Russia. Scrum Russia. Yeah, this is a, it must be very frustrating for the for the Japanese coaching staff. I mean, you can have all the best laid plans and uh, have you know the, the right game plan, but in terms of your basic skills are letting you down, your grip, your carry, your catch, and your pass, you know the game plan goes out the window, and, and vice versa for Russia. <laughs> this is great for them at the moment. You know, you can just see the confidence uh, they're growing. In fact, even their defence now is starting to become more offensive, where they were drifting, soaking up the tackles, they're getting on the front foot, they're starting to affect the, the game line, and you can see the confidence growing within the group. Crunch. Well, one or two observers were predicting Fine. a one-sided contest in terms of territory and possession. Stand up, please. There's no doubt that Japan have dominated the scoreboard. Uh, too, too much an movement. Even contest. Must stay still. Must be stationary. There's a lot of pressure coming through the Japanese loose head here. Slightly illegal. I mean, the refs coming to have a look at this side. He's, he's kicking his backside out and driving across the, across the scrum on the, onto the Russian tight end. So I think that's why the referees come around this side to have a look at it. Is the Japan loose head? Crouch. Plays for Toshiba Brave Lucas. Set. Yes, nine. Yeah, as the referee's there, he stays nice and square. <laughs> as all good props would do. Thanks, Strike mate. there, oh, and that's, uh, that's good. the hoof upfield. And the ball goes into touch. And that will be the last action of it's touched. It's the touched. first half. It's touched. Well, Kingsley Jones will be happy with that. Yeah, I think he'd be very happy in terms of uh, what his team have done in, in defence. But like I say, you know, the Japanese coaches, I can imagine there'll be uh, quite a few uh, raised voices in that changing room. They've created opportunities, but they're not taking them. So, half time in North Wales. Japan 13. Russia 13. Welcome back to Park Arias in Colwyn Bay in uh, North Wales. If you don't know this part of the world terribly well, that's the scoreline, by the way. Japan 13, Russia 13. If you don't know this part of the world, well, as I was driving up, only about half an hour away, you could look across the estuary to uh, the Wirral over to Hoyland, the Royal Liverpool Golf Club, which uh, is hosting the Open Golf Championship in the uh, relatively near future. So you're in that, uh, right in the north of Wales, just across the, uh, the bay from the Wirral and Liverpool. So uh, it's a uh, very interesting part of the country, North Wales, which traditionally isn't rugby heartland in Wales, but this... Uh, facility here, the Park Arias, which was opened up in 2011, thanks to uh, some support from World well, Central Government as well as the European Regional Development Fund, has become uh, certainly a new hotbed of rugby in uh, North Wales. Well, it's Chris Horseman, myself, Martin Gillingham, taking you through the action here. 13 points apiece. Two sides separated by five places in the IRB rankings, but you can't separate them on the scoreboard. You report, though, the Japanese, they would have had a rather firmer or rather harder, sterner chat in the dressing rooms than the Russians, because uh, certainly in that first 40, more going wrong for the Japanese than the Russians. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, like I say, as coaches, it's, it's frustrating when, uh, you know, 90% of what you want to get across to the players is, is working and working well. But like I say, the accuracy which is letting them down. I don't think they need to do anything different. They just need to do what they're doing, but do it better, really. And I suppose the message for the Russians is, look, stay in this game, limit your mistakes, keep putting pressure on the, the Japanese side and, you know, try and turn that um, mental mindset that the Japanese have into a negative one. The two sides meeting for the fifth time. First back in 2002 when Japan ran out 59 points to 19 winners. 
The three meetings since have all been won by the Brave Blossoms, most recently by 75 points to three, three years ago in Tokyo. So according to the form book, this should be a game for the Japan team to win. However, the Russians, who haven't played competitively for several weeks in Russia, rugby is very much a summer sport. So they've had uh, six weeks or so since the end of the Russian domestic season. They've only come together in the UK over the course of the last 10 days. They had a bit of a run out against Oxford University 10 days or so ago. The Japanese, meanwhile, okay, have come in. off a successful yep. June period and are now involved in their fourth game of the November phase. We're back underway. Japan in the chain strip, praying from left to right. Eventually mopped up there by uh, Dmitry Gerasimov, one of the players for the NSA club, one of the two most prominent clubs these days in uh, Russian domestic rugby, taken forward by Halani, the number eight. Japan will be looking for a fast start. There goes Tanaka. Six or seven metres inside the Russia half. That's the fly half on. Every hit matters. That one, Grasimov, eventually getting his man down. The ball back in the line. That's Goromaru. So much of the first half is Japan applying the pressure. Oh no, with the carry up to the edge of the 22 here. There goes So. Powerful runner. We saw that in the first half. Broadhurst that time, the former New Zealander, to within 10 metres. It's a very purposeful start to this second period. Good offload that time. Out to the wing, the captain, Hiroshi. Referee playing the advantage now to Japan. So they have the penalty coming. So, oh no, the fly half. Looking this time to spread it out wide. Saho cuts, cuts in there to within six or seven metres here, Japan. Tanaka, the scrum half, taken forward by Ono, the senior citizen of this uh, Japan side. The referee decides no advantage has come, so we're going to come all the way back for the penalty. Yeah, very good start there by Japan again. A lot more accuracy in terms of their passing there. You could definitely see they're still playing that same game, that good mix of forwards running off nine, but not just straight off the nine. The nine's getting it, you know, that guard and bodyguard defender around the ruck, making them bite, shortening that defensive line, then putting those big forwards into the gap. And Ten's doing very well. He's getting to the line, straightening, playing square, and hitting those big forwards. Nice good mix there. The plays his club rugby for Kintetsu Space. Liners in his early 30s, former New Zealander. One of those players who didn't quite crack it at super rugby level, ITM Cup level at home. Went in the, uh, went to the early days of uh, the Japan League, served his three years residency. Now playing test rugby, went to the World Cup, uh, Luke Thompson. Another advantage being played by the referee Luke Pierce here. Tanaka looking for the ball, that's the try line, you can see the scrum half has uh, spun it out, here's the inside run, again from So, the drive up and over the line, and Luke Pierce has awarded the try, well the pressure has finally told, it's a very different performance from the Japanese in this second half. Yeah, that was a great try there by uh, Broadhurst Seven there. He had uh, fan a fantastic uh, pick up and go around the, around the fringes there. I think in the first half, uh, Japan were a little bit guilty of getting a bit of white line fever with the forwards there, picking and going where they didn't need to. But, you know, they knew they had free ball there because they could come back to the advantage. But it was definitely the inside ball here off 10, back on those lazy defenders, inside shoulders. Great ball presentation here. And then Broadhurst, like any good flanker, picks and over the line. Yes, Michael Broadhurst, who only qualified after his three years residency last year. His 15th appearance for his adopted nation today. Goromaru makes it a seven-point score, and Japan leading by 20 points to 13. Michael Broadhurst plays uh, the Rico Black Rams. But a brother, James, you may have heard of him, who plays uh, Super Rugby for the Hurricanes. 
Yeah, uh, a very good player, um, Michael Broadhurst. But I watched him uh, obviously in the two tests against uh, Wales, and uh, I think he scored a try in, in the in the first test on a sort of front line uh, peel. But very good player, G gets in, does all that sort of that nitty gritty, the unseen work, you know, and a very very good flanker. With the restart to the try score broadcast. Change of the front of is on. And his 13th cap for Russia on the tight head side of the front row. Japan have got an overlap here if they can move this. It certainly looks like a very different Japan now, doesn't it? Precision in the offload. That's uh, Goromaru. Really stretching this Russian defence here. You know, well, everyone's carrying it, breaking over the uh, game line. Broadhurst there again, another muscular carry. And here we see more of the forwards getting involved in the action. Satoshi Onu, the oldest man in this uh, Japanese side at the age of 35. Well, the referee's going to his pocket here. I think we're going to see our first yellow card. Pavel Butenko. Well, in fact, it's uh, Vasily Artemyev. Vasily Artemyev. Yeah, I think something of a poster boy for Russia rugby goes off. Yeah, I think it was definitely slowing the ball down there, and, uh, and this is what happens in terms of uh, you know rugby. If you, you're making tackles time and time after again, and if you're constantly on the back foot, eventually you're going to get caught on the wrong side of the ruck, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally. You, you're going to get yellow carded there. And I suppose the referee's been consistent. He did warn them in the first half, and here we see, yeah, number 14 there just laying on the ball, making no attempt to move. He's taken one for the team. That really is just the accumulation of those sort of offences, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, nothing malicious or uh, nasty involved in it. But it's, ne it's never nice getting yellow carded, is it? That lonely walk off the field. Yes, Vasily Artemyev, who established his reputation at the Churchill Cup three years ago. And he played at fullback against the United States in the opening game, scored the opening try of the tournament. Immediately caught the eye of uh, the watching scouts. At Franklin's Gardens. Well, we have to admire the uh, kicking boot of uh, Ayumu Goromaru. No, and that's the, that's the perfect start. You can obviously see what the coaches have said, just a bit more accuracy. And they've got 10 points. And it'll be interesting to see with this yellow card. I mean, they say normally it's seven points in terms of uh, being a man down, but the pressure Russia are under in terms of the amount of ball that uh, Japan got, it could be quite costly, this yellow card for them. 10 points to nil in the uh, first seven minutes of the second half. Portion of is on at hooker for Russia, the former Russia captain, Korshinov, whose name may be recognised by fans of Wasp, who played a short period in the Aviva Premiership. Yeah, good, good kick there by Japan, knowing that the, the Russians are down uh, one man in that back three, so that back three pendulum is under a lot more pressure working there. Now, that's a great spot by uh, the Japanese there, just forcing the Russians out and playing from their own half, putting the pressure back on them. Vladislav uh, Korshinov. <laughs> his 62nd cap, his 61st cap, he earned on this ground 12 months ago. Against, uh, almost 12 months of the day. Blood bin, yeah, okay, we've got a blood change, please, Justin. Thanks, man. Change being made around. by Japan as well. Hiroshi Yamashita, the Belko Steelers, hands on. Good, time on. Yeah, took one of the little cut on the eyebrow, unfortunately. It was one of those uh, dangers of being a front row forward. Oh, big tackle there by well, Russia. Was caution off, wasn't it? Certainly on making the... his presence felt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I really felt that. <laughs> well, biggest player, I'm the smallest player there, I think. <laughs> Caution, I'll be sizing him up, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, one of those really bad ones when you look in the opposite way and you've sort of opened your ribs up for that night. Ten metres back. Quick line out. Well worked there by uh, the Japanese. Another carry from Helani. 
If they're a different side, aren't they? Japan and a great break there from Sao. And he's gone straight through. He threatened to do it in the first half. And now he's doing it in the second. Yeah, that was great play by the Japanese. It was initially from that shortened lineup, using their back row to tie in the, the inside and the outside centre of Russia. The forwards then, the Russian forwards are struggling to fold on that defensive alignment. And then it's just weighted numbers here. And this is good accuracy passing here. Ball in two hands. Good grip, good control. And a great finish there. The Russia defenders groping in thin air. One or two question marks tonight about the precision of his handling, but his hard, straight running. He's been a real threat all evening. Yeah. I think the real difference in terms of the teams at the moment is the back five of the scrums. It, for Japan, all of their back five of the scrums are offering themselves in terms of four, five, six, seven, eight, offering to carry that ball. They're always there, in inside, outside of ten, getting over the advantage line. And in terms of the Russians, their back row hasn't really, haven't really affected anything in the tackle. I think they've got one turnover from a counter ruck, but they're not slowing the ball down. They're not making those offensive tackles. It's just soak up after soak up. It has been a transformation in this second half. Maybe second try. Ayumu Goromaru. stay down this time so a rare blemish on his card one man advantage where you talked about it seven to ten points there are uh, five of them of course without the penalty as well it has been quite a change hasn't it just the last few minutes how do you explain it i think it's just basically that accuracy like I say, they haven't they haven't changed their approach and how they're playing. The structure of how they're playing the game has stayed exactly the same. But they're not looking for those miracle offloads. They're actually taking their time and they're just being a bit more patient and a bit more accurate with their carrier. The high ball from Bramil Gesan, the fullback. Russia have it. The pick up there from Zikov. Ryabov went one way. That's Garbasov. On the occasion of his 50th international for Russia. Test of character now for Russia. They will have come here not with particularly high expectations, but those expectations would have been raised by that first half performance. This is Makovetsky. They've leaked 15 points in the first 10 minutes of this second half. There we see the accuracy again for the Russian team, but you know their forwards here are struggling to get over the game line, and Japan are putting a lot of pressure. Russia having to send in a lot of men into this breakdown, and they're playing off slow ball again. Got a bizarre with the quick hands, but and it was put down. Chance here to counter Tanaka with a little chip ahead. That's a great kick, spotting that the winger was up there and putting pressure on him. Well, Garasimov got himself in all sorts of trouble there, didn't he? He was uh, trying to get his off, and then the quick throw in, but the referee's blown his whistle. That is uh, Dmitry Garasimov from the NSA STM club. He signalled it was a, a Russian throw in there, but <laughs> I couldn't quite make it out. It looked, a like, force, a, yeah, yeah, it looked like a Japan throw in there, but that was great play there by the halfbacks of Japan there. You know, that, that intelligent kick, on, knowing that there are a man down on that on. wing, the space is up on. there, putting it over the wing ahead, How and that good in, chase please? there. Okay, two in the line out, back ten, your receiver. So, Let's two play. in the line out. Here's uh, Vladislav Korshinov. Stolen out of the hands that time of uh, Pavel Butenko. He was first, and he went backwards. <laughs> The ball for Japan. That was uh, Tamuru inside the 22. No, no. Relax, relax, relax. Hey, hey, hey. Well, for the okay. first, well, it's not the first time tonight for uh, Polinyashi Halani. He's already been warned once. He's a little short, I might suggest. Okay, oh, looks like an individual who likes to get involved in the, the rough and tumble of the sport. Like I say, it hasn't been a bad tempered match uh, by any stretch of the imagination. But once again, that little bit of accuracy there, just uh, inaccuracy, shall I say, just crept into the, uh, the Japanese there. Because turnover ball is the ball you want to play with, you know, because the defense isn't organized. As, as coaches, that's the ball you want to play with, you know, because, like you say, you've got that opportunity to attack against an unorganized defense. 
Luke Pierce just pointing out to the Russia captain that this Crush. scrum is inside the 22. So, uh, Bind. if they want to, they will Set. have the option to kick the ball directly into touch. That's the significance yes, of that. Ryabov getting the yes nine instruction. Look at the pressure being applied. Gresso with a quick pick up at the base. It really has to be the way for Set Russia tonight. Side, They've been under pressure in the set piece. Gason getting his kick away just in time. Chance to counter here for the fullback, Ramaru. Gets through the first tackle. He's uh, stripped of the ball rather too easily. I think they've won it back and they've got an opportunity here. They have got it back, haven't they? There's the inside ball, looks a little bit forward, it was certainly knocked on. But both sides uh, <laughs> giving away possession rather too easily there. First of all, the uh, fullback was stripped Remember of the ball the in the tackle, and then the tackler lost the ball immediately again. Yeah, this, I think it's, it's, it's been a sort of problem for both sides, isn't it, in terms of the accuracy of pass. You know, you know, we think about it in rugby. You know, particularly a lot of these guys are professional rugby players. You, you know, the catch and the pass is such an integral skill, and, and sometimes, you know, under pressure, it really, it really comes under sort of the microscope. So this is the fourth match of Japan's November series. It started off Crouch. over in Japan, that defeat Bind. by the All Blacks, 54 Set. points to six. They then went yes, to uh, Murrayfield last weekend. They were beaten 42-17 by the Scots. And then uh, the second team, many changes, made for the Tuesday night match against Gloucester, where they lost by 40 points to five at King's Home. But they're on top here. As you might expect, that's Garabazov. Seven years back, Kingsley Jones has recognised his uh, potential in the second row. Good little break there from the fly half, Shugarabov. He's uh, referred these days to Kushnarev, who was one of the first names on the team sheet. And that was Gresev, who just had his feet to touch. Gresev is a powerful runner and certainly three or four years ago was one of the standout players for this Hang Russia on, two, side. But two. Hang on a second. at this level, still one or two gaps in his armoury. Okay. Yeah, the old Cardinal Sinner being pushed out into touch there. Bit of a nothing attack, but I suppose Russia have got, got a chance there on. But speaking of Kingsley Jones, I think the, the problem for him is a lot of the players are based in Russia and the, the strength of that league in terms of the competition is, you know, what test are these players getting week in, week out? There's a lack of depth, isn't there? Yeah. They're about three or four really good clubs there, and that's, that's about good, it. That's good. Where you look at in terms of the, the, the Japanese league and the club league they have, you know, I know there's a lot of foreigners there, but it's a competitive league in terms of what they're playing in. I know the uh, fly half in midfield. Certainly been puncturing holes in that defence and a chance here for the wing and Fujita's got real pace. The tackle from uh, Strusko got the first try of the night. There's Ono, the fly half. Japan again to within three or four meters. Out from Tanaka. Now it's Tamura. And a good step, and it's another try for Mali Sau. And it's beginning to look rather too easy now for Japan. There has been a transformation at half time. Yeah, definitely. And uh, that, that was a great play again. And it all comes down to that speed of the ball in the, and the game line. You know, rugby's quite a straightforward, simple game. You know, if you get over the game line, you're going to be on the front foot and it's going to be difficult. But those gaps are starting to appear because Russia haven't got time to reorganize that defensive line. And, you know, I say they've got some dangerous runners there, and that's another well taken try. Japan seemingly on their way to a fifth win against Russia in five meetings. Pretty good percentages at the moment for uh, Oromaru. Five out of six becomes six out of seven, so well into the 80s percent this evening. The um, uh, difficult little spell now for Russia, you know. This sort of the 60th minute, you know, when they start to get tired, I imagine Kings will be looking towards the bench now, bring on a few fresh legs, because if they keep missing these tackles, it, you know, the score could uh, get quite heavy. Time is still on. Well, they've come through the sim binning period, but it has been costly. The restart, Artem Yev sprinting after it. Broadhurst, one of the try scorers there, with a catch, and he's got through two tackles, and he's up and running again. 
change in the second row, so Garvis off, leaves the field. Justin Ives is also on. Milani, so uh, the number eight has gone off. That's a great pass there. Really flat to the advantage line. And you can see the Japanese, they're all realigned. Forwards there running, options inside and out. And the Russians are struggling. They've got a lot of forwards here in midfield. And if J Japan get quick ball, they could exploit this. Oh no, dummies inside. Gets through the first tackle attempted by the captain, Voitov. Here's Broadhurst again. He loses it forward in the tackle. Yeah, Broadhurst has certainly impressed me again this game. He's been a, a real presence for this uh, Japanese side. You can see he's, he's been effective in the lineup. He's been very good in terms of the breakdown, all the unseen work. But I think the thing that's impressed me the most is his carry. You know, getting over the advantage line again and again. But just a bit loose with his carry there, just stripped in the tackle. Alexander Kudyakov, because he made the tackle there. So the captain has gone off, and it's the uh, sizeable presence of Denis Antonov, who earns his 16th cap in the second row. Big, big man. There's certainly some big individuals in this Russian side over there, and obviously being based up here with the RGC team and uh, they've been using the facilities. They've been walking past me in the corridor and I've been straining my neck to look up. I think there's some very, very big boys there. Yeah, Antonov and Fatikov uh, now in the second row. Well over six feet tall, well over 100 k's. Crouch! Shnubalatsa there on the loose head side. Yes, nine. Instruction there for uh, Ryabov. Japan uh, in last for the early engagement. Here's a bit of space here for Artemyev. The chip ahead from Artemyev's got real pace here, and Artemyev, well, he can't oh, gather okay. it. He was certainly given a bit of a nudge as he went through, but he had a bit of time there, I think, did uh, Vasily Artemyev. He certainly worked something in there out of nothing, you know, a very, very good uh, kick through and showed a really good, good bit of pace there, just to lack that little bit of composure. James Pitt doesn't quite make touch, but uh, his volleyball skills there from the fly on, Sergei Sugarabov. There's the high ball, Sugarabov is after it, nobody's underneath it though. Keep, 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 keep! see the captain they were trying to drive him into touch but the uh, Russia players failing to retreat the 10 meters so they're offside yeah a lot of those Russian forwards uh, struggle to get back I mean I can imagine they're pretty tired of the tackling they do but you know the kick wasn't the greatest it didn't really give them much time uh, to get back on side and another opportunity for Japan just to work themselves into the Russian half and uh, see what they can do attacking wise and that's a very good kick in that scenario as a forward you simply have no alternative but just simply run away yeah. you have to do that don't you you have to be seen to run away yeah i think i think what the ref's looking for is just that intent you know obviously you, you know sometimes if you're tired there but you just need to make that intent to get away from the ball there yes you can see clearly that uh, bit of push and a shove that Vasily artem you have got but with uh, a little more composure he maybe should have gathered it there's Mr. Borthwick, former England captain, Sarri's captain, cutting his teeth on the coaching game here, working with the Japanese. Yeah, having played with Steve when I was at, at Bath, you know, he was always one of those lads, even when he came into the Bath side at sort of 18, 19, he's very professional, very methodical in terms of his, his line-out work, and you can it's see, you know, with the Japanese side, that's definitely carrying on with his coaching. Broadhurst again. Japan. Russia now would just simply look to limit the damage. Japan playing with so much more confidence than they were at this stage in the first half. They go so again. He's uh, looking for a hat trick here. Yeah, just breaking the game line at will here. You know, Russia are making so cut tackles in the speed of this ball, but that, that's better work there by the Russians. Getting in over the ball and a good little pick up and drive there. Yes, that came from uh, Zikov, the replacement tight head, the clearance kick charged down. And giving possession immediately back to Japan here. And they've got a 
penalty. Yeah, very cynical there by uh, Russia there. I think they knew exactly what they were doing, slowing that ball down because I think to the right-hand side that Japan had numbers and there was just Russian forwards there. So I think that was definitely taking one for the team there. Well, uh, Koromaru is being Touch called it. forward and uh, being quite there deliberate goes. there in where he's pointing. After an experience in the first half, Koromaru setting up the line out, five That's metres out. Uh, Japan will fancy themselves that they'll probably go for a full line out here. And I, I imagine they'll go for the drive, particularly, you know, in the first half they scored that try, and earlier in the second half they had a very purposeful drive here. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see if Russia actually go up to compete or will they just stay down and try and sack this drive. Sorry, hold on a second. Are you a receiver? In 15, please. So, Shutahori will have Thank you. confirmed the line out call. Going 20, there is Justin Ives. Another of the four New Zealanders. And he's gone to the back to Broadhurst. And here's the drive. It's a very good setup by the Japanese. Oh, I think he's going to do them there. The truck and trailer, just the back of the disengaged from the uh, back of the ruck there. He was going forward so fast, the ball carrier just went away from the ruck. Yes, the ball becoming detached yeah. and effectively becomes offside and obstruction. Uh, number one, Japan. I think they were sort of a, they were held to their own misfortune there by the success of the drive. They're almost going too fast here. If we can see here, just takes the ball. Yeah, that's where it the, becomes yeah. detached. Yeah, and then it's just that obstruction there. Yeah, send him you know, it's always that fine balance, you know, we say with the driving more, get the ball to the back and you'll notice the first person goes in, he never drives forward. He just works himself back to the back of the mall, but obviously you've got to make sure you don't get detached there. So one's coming back on. Well, one, the Russians certainly unloading their bench. You got lucky. Denis Simpkevic is on. Japan just waits for the ball. Yes, sir. Leaving the pitch. Another yeah, big scrum here for Russia. They've been Touch. under a little bit of pressure in the second half. I'd, like I say, I think that's the fatigue with the tackles, but Japan have certainly got a good set piece unit. Yes, nine. So Ryabov, pick up there from Gresev. And he's saying uh, Ostrushko. Russia here, initially trying to run the ball out of their 22. And uh, putting the ball in touch. You can see the difference in terms of the defensive organisation there. You can see Japan, they're fast off the line, they're making solid de offensive tackles and they're slowing the ball down. And th therefore, Russia are having to send in a lot of numbers, the ball's slow, the defensive line can reset and put pressure on that kicker. They've had two or three balls charged down because of that scenario in the second half. So Hisatero Hiroshima comes on, he replaces Masateka Mikami. So a change on the loose head side of the front row. To Luke Thompson. Same again here from the Japanese. Let's see if they can coordinate this one. It's Kotohori who's got it. The referee's got his arm out. It's an advantage here for Japan. The cross kick straight over to the right wing, who had time to stop, gather it, and score. The captain, Toshiyaka Hiroshi. Very good play there by, by the Japanese. You know, sucking those defenders in, shortening that defensive line with that effective driving, driving line-up. Like I say, once you've got that penalty advantage uh, in the 22, the referee's going to literally let you play until you don't want it. You know, we call it free ball, and that's a great spot there by uh, the Japanese 10. And, you know, a good finish there. Took a bit of composure to do. Ball away from the defender and work well. Yes, the Russia defence not really alert yeah, to that. Just, just it was a kick pass to nothing because Luke Pierce was uh, playing the advantage for Japan. Well, it looks so promising at half time, but the second half at the moment 27 points to nil in Japan's favour. Well, you can certainly see the team that's been together and, and played more rugby over the, over this autumn period as, as the game's wearing on. You can see the lack of match practice and match fitness is certainly taking its toll from the Russians. But, you know, we, they've got to be impressed with their first half performance. It's not like they're rolling over here and, and just allowing the Japanese to do what they want to do. You know, they are, they're still competing. They've still showed a couple of glimpses and, you know, they're unlucky not to get a try earlier as well. That was another good strike from uh, Koromaru. 
Just uh, sliding wide, though. Here's the Russians beat Belgium back in March by 43 points to 32. But since then, we went to the IRB Nations Cup in Bucharest in Romania. Lost to Romania by 30 points to 20. And then were beaten by second string outfits from Italy, the, the emerging Italy side, by 27 points to 19. And then the Argentinian Jaguars by 30 points to 17. Turn to Russia for the domestic season, which has now been over for six weeks. So they come here a little bit underdone. And the Japanese, after a rather stuttering performance in the first half, have been transformed at half time. That's a replacement scrum half. So what, sir? Now to Broadhurst again, who steps inside. Makovetsky, with a bit of help from his friends, makes the tackle. And once again. Yeah, it's just this quick ball they're getting. They've got options on both sides here of Japan. You know, Russia not being able to slow this ball down. And Broadhurst again getting over that advantage line. Nice offload in the tackle here. Yes, to his back row partner, that was uh, Hendrik Tui. There's the captain, Rossi, the most recent try scorer. Once he gets the pass out to his fly half, Kaseono. So once again, he wants a replacement scrum half, but he started for Japan against New Zealand in the World Cup. Again played at Hamilton. Good step. Space out wide. Well, the Russia defense being tested, but it was a good tackle coming in for Igor Galanovsky. Yeah, good scramble in defence there by <coughs> by Russia, but he just get a feeling at the moment with Japan. Uh, you know, it's only a matter of time before they they get another try. Here we see again, you know, forwards holding that defensive line. That's a great step here, just a pass. Doesn't quite hold that defender and does very well there. Scramble across to uh, get that man into touch. Yeah, just push back, please. That's good. Okay, you're just receiving. Just for a moment. Uh, into Yamada, maybe thought there was an opportunity to score on his test debut. The only debutant tonight. Lutenko taking the ball in the line out. The last 10 minutes in Colwyn Bay. Japan leading by 40 points to 13. 27 0 in this second half. That's good. Clearance taken by Goromara. He really needs to get that off, uh, you know, the forwards are tired and he's just kicking that to a, their back three for Japan. Oh, and again, another drop ball. <laughs> you can't do that. Not on still. Yes, well, it was a good break from Yamada. Here he is, stepping, looking for the support. And you have to say, there was nothing much wrong with that pass. Yeah, he could be a bit disappointed with that, but I think the, the disappointing thing I think for the Russian forwards would have been, look, hang on, we've just defended six or seven phases, we've won a good ball, we've driven up to the 22, we're still inside our 22, kick the ball out, give us a bit of a chance, but Time off, please. Russia just put that ball straight back down to the Japan back three, and we've seen how dangerous they are in open field, you know, not helping themselves in terms of their clearance at the moment, Russia. I think it is, he's down there on one knee, just getting a bit of treatment. Justin, I've got a uh, 32 and a half play. Is that Pinker? There he is, oh, okay. from the... Is that what TVA got as well? Klesniyar team. Now 30. I think just his 10th cap tonight. A bit of running repairs for a front row forward. Just to make sure he's uh, probably just a bit of a breather, really, just, just to get ready for this scrum here. Important scrum for Russia, this. Stop. It's been a good 2013 largely for Japan. Eddie Jones, their head coach, led them to their sixth successive championship win in the Asian Five Nations. After that, they took on Wales. Wales, of course, had 15 away on Lions duty. Japan lost the first one, 22 18. Look at the power there. That's a very good scrum there by, by the Japanese. Staying low, working as a cohesive unit, and Russia forced to clear that ball, but not well enough. And it's another opportunity for these dangerous Japanese backs here, and they make another good line break. Yes, and Yamada driving on the space he's getting, taken for that time from Hiroshima. Far too much space now for Japan. 
There's some tired and heavy legs on that Russia side, although they've got a penalty here, a chance to clear their lines. Yeah, good work there by uh, the Russian forwards there, over getting over that ball, first, isolating uh, the, the Japanese ball carrier. But like I say, it's looking a bit ominous here for the Russians because the Japanese players are just getting over that game line again and again. And you can see a few of the Russian players are getting sort of running repairs in the backfield there. They're certainly looking tired. There's Japan here, of course, without their head coach, Eddie Jones, who's recovering at home. From, uh, ill health. Just the ball carry, boys, okay? So it came as kind of shock to the rugby world when uh, we heard uh, of uh, Eddie's health problems, and I'm sure if he's watching tonight, he'll have uh, been lifted by this performance. Certainly the second half performance, and I know that everybody in the rugby community wishes Eddie Jones well. Scott Wise Mantle, who's had a pretty tough ba baptism as the uh, stand-in interim coach with that defeat by the All Blacks, even though uh, Japan played so well for so long in that match, and then the defeat last week at Murrayfield. Yeah, I mean, it's been a been a t bit of a baptism, baptism of fire, but, you know, there's been a lot for him to be pleased at, you know, the, particularly the Scotland performance, you know, up to 50 minutes, they were certainly in that game. That was a maul, it would have been a turnover, but no advantage for the knock-on. Yeah, He's no going to bring it back here for the uh, advantage to Russia from the knock-on. No advantage, knock-on. Yeah, game's gone a bit scrappy now. Yeah, obviously, you know, we know the Japanese are going to win this game. I think the Russians are just thinking, look, if we can keep it at 14, 40, 13, you know, we'll be happy with this. And, and you can see the sort of Perfectly tiredness square. is creeping into both teams here. Okay. Change it, hooker. For Japan, Hiroki Yahara is on in place of Shota Hori. There goes Hori. He'll be playing Super Rugby again next uh, next year for the Melbourne Rebels. Yeah, he's a very good player. You know, tonight you've seen him; he's carried well. But more importantly, you know, he's done what he's needed to do as a hooker. He's hit his men in the line out, and he's certainly held that scrum together. And they start to get very dominant as the game goes on. So he's played very well. Okay, just stay balanced, stay balanced. Go on. Crouch. Now stand up. Oh, hang on, hang on. Hang on, let me talk. Here comes the referee standing in the middle of six big men and uh, telling them exactly what to do. And all, everyone there has got an opinion, all the front row players and the referee. Scrums have been really good. Let's finish on a good note. Luke Pierce wants it all to finish on a good note. There are some tired limbs and hearts that are beating just a little bit faster, I think, in that Russia front five. Set. Yeah, they've certainly had to make their fair share of tackles tonight, and you can see how that's affecting their set piece now. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I'm not happy, says hang Luke on, Pierce. Hang on, hang on. I'll come that. I'll come that side. <laughs> yeah, he's um, making his. Oh, he's going to go to the other side, and I can tell you what's going to happen. It's all going to happen on the side he's not. <laughs> and all the props will stand up and claim their innocence. Stay off the arm for. Forty points to thirteen. Japan lead on their way to a fifth win. In these two sides, fifth meeting, it'll be Japan's first ever win in Wales. They played here in the World Cup back in 1999, and they've had a couple of other matches in Wales that were at neutral venues, as is tonight's, of course. Oh, that's a great scrum by Japan. The Russia pack in reverse. Somehow they've emerged with it. That's the fly off sugar to off. Yeah, that's great work there by the Japanese. I mean, like I say, I was very impressed with their set piece against Scotland and uh, the All Blacks. And as the game's worn on, you can certainly see they've definitely got the edge in the, in the scrum. Taken forward by Fatakov up to the halfway line. Sugar off again, feeds out. There's uh, Velenovsky, wearing 22. Last three minutes or so. I nice see Russia with the ball in hand, but you can certainly see the difference in terms of the speed of their attack and the rucks and what have you. It's a lot slower than the Japanese ball. Pressure really being applied here by Japan. Russia keeping possession, but if anything, going backwards. And then the knock on, the pressure telling, and it came from Sergei Shugarov. 
Yeah, and there we sort of saw the difference in the teams just in terms of that accuracy. They, uh, the Russian attack a lot, I know it's late in the game, but the ball they're producing is slow. Their forwards are not getting back to offer themselves in a threat. And the, but the Japanese, their defence is really good, committing one or two to the contact area and they're getting a full line of defenders out there and putting pressure on the, pressure on the Russian side. Well, the Russians have made a change at scrum half right at the death. Alexei Shaban comes on for his 10th cap. Wait for the ball. It's good. He replaces Anton Ryabov. So the last two minutes of the match. 13 points apiece at half time. 27 nil in the last 37 minutes to Japan. It has been very one-sided in this second period. Yeah, definitely, and I'm sure Japan would like to finish this game with another try, you know, to get as close to that 50 mark as they can. Crash. Bind. Set. Yes, no. So, Hiwasa with the put-in. And the control at the base. Hiwasa. Another run there from Sao, who loses it forward in the tackle. Back to the first one. Well, relax. No, 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 no. Well, that's the art of yeah, trying to run the ball out of his own 22. Back here. Knock on. Scrum rush. Here is uh, Mali Sao. Being uh, dispossessed a little too easily. Really, really close now. Okay, just this scrum. I want you very close. No head. Uh, you can post once the ball is in, and you can show me the ball. Let's go, Michael Broadhurst, providing the interpretation from the referee, Luke Pierce. That's good. Thank you. No step back. The referee saying that you can show your domination. But you have to wait until the ball is put in. Crash. So Alexei Shaban is almost certainly the last Set. phase of the match. Yes, nine. There's the instruction. Yes, nine. Could I say the quick strike from the hooker? Caution off. Shaban. On to caution off. And Shaban again. Taken back into the 22, the clearance kick from uh, Shugarabov doesn't find touch. Goromaru. We're into the red numbers at the end of the match. An opportunity for Yamada. Looks very impressive with the ball in hand. There goes the whistle, the ball has gone forward. And the final whistle. Well, Russia certainly held their own in that first half. But more precision came from the Japanese in that second 40. Whatever was said at half time certainly had the right impact. And Russia failed to trouble the scorers in that second half, with Russia winning it by 27 points to nil. There is the final score. Japan in the end, making it five out of five in the history of the meetings of these two sides. Japan beating Russia by 40 points to 13. Their first meeting in three years. There are certainly two sides who came to this match with uh, different approaches. Russia's first international match since the middle of June when they went to the uh, IRB Nations Cup in Romania. Japan this is their fourth match of their November series and their first victory after defeat by New Zealand, by Scotland and then on Tuesday night by Gloucester. So in the end the IRB rankings holding good, the side ranked in 14th spot beating the Russians who are 19 and certainly for North Wales it's been quite an occasion these two uh, second tier rugby nations coming here. 
fighting it out in North Wales. Well, there are the winners who in the end have enjoyed their evening. Just uh, coming over to this near touchline. Touchline in a couple of moments' time will be uh, Chris Horseman, who's looking for somebody to speak to. Confirmation of the final score: Japan beating Russia by 40 points to 13. Let's go down to uh, pitch side now. Chris Horseman is speaking to the Japanese captain, Toshiaki Horoshi. I'm joined with the Japanese captain. Uh, you must be pleased with tonight's performance, uh, a good win in the end. Uh, very good uh, second half performance, but in the first half, you, some very good play, both backs and forwards, but lacking a bit of an accuracy. What was said at half time by the coaches? Uh, well, well done. I hope you've enjoyed your stay in North Wales and a very good performance by the Japanese side. Thank you very much. Hiroshi, the Japanese captain and one of the try scorers tonight in the end it has proved a comfortable victory for Japan but Russia will leave North Wales with some encouragement from myself Martin Gillingham and Chris Horseman it's a very good night